joining us now with reaction. The author of the brand new book is out today. It's called Treason. Former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor, Newt Gingrich. All right, here's what's amazing about this to me. Number one, you see the dark arts of politics that the Clintons played against Obama. That's now revealed in WikiLeaks. And on top of that, you got this collusion, full collusion with the media. They're, it, they're an extension of Clinton. Then it's also the State Department. They're tipping off Clinton. The Justice Department is tipping off Clinton. The White House is helping Clinton with the email server scandal. And why? Because Obama, who said he learned about the emails um, like we did from the press, actually was emailing the private email. What do you make of all this? In the media, by the way, all they want to talk about is some new woman that made an allegation this late in the game against Donald Trump. Well, look, I think you have to see that the whole thing as, as the same thing. You have so much corruption underway now that, you know, you get a million dollar check from a dictatorship in the Middle East for as a birthday gift for Bill Clinton. Well, in a healthy society, that'd be considered bribery. You get um, the uh, richest man in Mexico donating millions of dollars to the Clinton Foundation, while he's also the major stockholder in the New York Times, which just happens to be doing everything it can to protect uh, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton. Can I, can I just stop you? All the million this dollar the check came from Qatar, a country that allows yes. that its marital rape is legal? Well, it's also a country which, which Hillary herself had said was helping support and sustain ISIS. Yep. I mean, one of the things, the, the, you know, WikiLeaks, is, there's so much material there that it's going to take a while for it to sink in. But WikiLeaks actually is going to presently give us an entirely new understanding of how sick and how dishonest and how corrupt the left is and all of its mechanisms, the news media, the bureaucracy, the campaign. And at the center of it are the Clintons, and Hillary Clinton is the most corrupt candidate ever to run for president of the United States. And, you, and you're now seeing detail after detail after detail that it's beyond any reasonable question of the depth of their corruption and the, what they would bring into the White House. Uh, if you look at how they, the $10 billion was supposed to go to help the Haitians uh, after uh, the last earthquake, and, and, and what do we have happen? Yeah. We suddenly had friends of Bill who came to, not, not people who knew Haiti, not people who had particular skills, but friends of Bill, people who had donated, suddenly got special State Department treatment. This kind of stuff surfacing now in a way that I suspect the average American over the next week or two is just going to be sickened by the repetitive example, example, example you, right, of corruption. Do you think it's a coincidence that here we are 25 days out of a campaign and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Six women come out and make allegations against Donald Trump. Six. And do you think it's coincidental it's happening right in the middle of a massive document no. dump that implicates the Clintons? Look, if you're the New York Times or CBS News or the Washington Post, and you're desperately propping up the most corrupt candidate in history, you're going to reach for anything. I, I think it's actually funny today that the man who was cited by that first woman being on the first class flight in the airplane 30 years ago actually came out of the woodwork, turns out to be British, said, yes, I was sitting across the aisle. No, she's a total liar. I mean, you know, all this, these things are all going to unravel. Uh, but it gives the media a chance for a few days to try to suppress the Trump voter. And I think it makes the polls highly inaccurate Listen. because... You get three or four days like this, a lot of voters aren't going to say Donald Trump's name when they're called by a pollster, but they will say they will answer Donald Trump. This is why Rasmussen is very different from some of the polls, because it doesn't require you to tell a person what you're going to do. That's pretty interesting. Um, and I like that what you're saying. It took me 10 minutes to outline just the headlines of what is so, oh, there's so much here about collusion with the media, collusion with the State Department, collusion with the Justice Department, and the White House knowing, and Obama lied, and they're talking about erasing emails that are under subpoena. There's a lot here. As the Clinton campaign faces more fallout from the apparent hack of campaign chairman John Podesta's personal email, the campaign today called on Trump to condemn what Clinton folks say is Russia's, quote, direct assault on our democracy. Well, when I sat down with Vice President Biden yesterday, I asked him about how the U.S. is responding to all of the recent hacking from Russia. Why haven't we sent a message yet to Putin? We're sending a message. We have the capacity to do it. And uh, the message he'll that we sent, it? To, he'll know it. 
and it'll be at the time of our choosing and under the circumstances that have the greatest impact. Uh, the capacity to do, to fundamentally alter the election is, is, is not what people think. And uh, I tell you what, to the extent that they do, we will be proportional in what we do. And uh, at, at the So a message is going to be sent? Will the public know it? I hope not. U.S. officials have reportedly told NBC News that the CIA is preparing for a possible cyber attack against Russia. The move would apparently be intended as retaliation for Russia's alleged interference in America's presidential election, a charge Russia denies and for which it says the U.S. still has no evidence. It said an attack would seek to, quote, harass and embarrass Russian authorities. And former U.S. diplomat Jim Jatras, however, thinks there might be other reasons for a cyber offensive against Moscow. This is almost like a like a press release that the government is giving out as a warning shot or really a threat against the Russians. And even though they're saying this is connected to the election, there's no real evidence regarding the uh, DNC and the other things on WikiLeaks. What the statement says is that it's geared toward interference with the election itself, with the voting. And uh, anybody who's familiar with our system knows that that's ne next to impossible. We don't have a si single nationwide voting system. We have 50 states, thousands of local, state, and county systems, most of which are paper, most of which are even the electronic ones, not connected to the Internet. So the idea that Russia or anybody else could hack into those is just absurd. So I don't think that's what this is really about. As, as we know, this whole Russia, Russia, Russia theme has been uh, a, a, a constant of Hillary Clinton's campaign, and maybe the Obama administration is trying to help her out a bit by turning up the heat and pointing the finger. It's kind of a, you, a cyber saber rattle. It's almost they're daring themselves to do something just to show that they can, and it's become then a matter of prestige. It's, it's almost like they're daring themselves to do something that may turn out to be quite destructive for everybody. The blame game began some time ago, with the latest accusations claiming WikiLeaks and Russia are somehow linked in releasing emails from Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman. It all began with a tweet. RT America commented online about the latest batch of emails from Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta, which had been made public by WikiLeaks. Journalist Christopher Miller noticed RT tweeted about the leaks earlier than WikiLeaks itself, which to him suggested RT knew about the material before it was even released. His idea proved incendiary and was picked up by Clinton's camp, which claimed the tweet was evidence of Russian interference in the US presidential race. WikiLeaks, however, denied the accusations. It said the leaks were available on its website for all to see. Nevertheless, the story continued to spread. In less than a day, one tweet was enough to make the mass media and US politicians completely sure Russia was again guilty of hacking. There is growing evidence that Russia is using WikiLeaks as a delivery vehicle for hacked emails and other information. U.S. officials with knowledge of the investigation tell CNN. I don't think there's any question that Russia is involved. Russia is trying to influence this campaign. Now, we just have to wait to see if the scandal will be commented on by top-level American officials. After all, we've seen it play out exactly like this before. This summer, what started as a reference to an unnamed source disclosing alleged Russian hacking of the Democratic campaign ended with official confirmation by U.S. intelligence. And a three-paragraph report with lots of confidence, but not a single shred of proof. Well, even though the U.S. authorities claim there's an official investigation underway into Russia's involvement, it seems we're unlikely to ever see any of its results. I'll let the FBI speak to what evidence they've been able to amass, but I think they're also cognizant of the fact that as soon as they make a declaration like that, most people are going to understandably be interested in seeing that evidence. And some of that evidence may not be something that we want to show. Welcome to my chambers. The hack on the Democratic National Committee, which exposed emails, continues to intrigue. The emails which were exposed by WikiLeaks revealed a very strong bias on the part of high officials in the Democratic Party for the candidacy of Hillary Clinton and a very strong prejudice on the part of the same people towards the candidacy of Bernie Sanders. Even though such bias and prejudice had been alleged by Sanders and denied by the Democratic National Committee. 
It even resulted in the resignation of the chair of the committee as a result of a unanimous request from the members of the committee and the intervention of President Obama himself. But in order to get this issue off the front page, the DNC and the Clinton campaign decided to blame, of all people, the Russians. They accused Vladimir Putin of being in cahoots with Donald Trump and having his intelligence services hack the DNC to expose emails to make Mrs. Clinton look bad and thereby benefit Donald Trump. But the Russians had nothing to do with it. Because this week, a 30-year veteran of the National Security Administration, the NSA, the domestic spies who spy on all of us all the time, the former high-ranking NSA official who developed the software that the NSA now uses, which allows it to capture not just metadata, but content of every telephone call, text message, email in the United States, of every person in the United States of America. This individual said, guess what? The NSA hacked the Democratic National Committee. Why would the NSA hack the DNC? because the members of the intelligence community simply do not want Hillary Clinton to be president of the United States because she doesn't know how to handle state secrets because some of the state secrets that she revealed use the proper true names of American intelligence agents operating undercover in the Middle East when they lost their covers they ran for their lives and some of them didn't run fast enough and lost their lives it's very telling that the intelligence community would feel so strongly about Mrs. Clinton that they would attempt to sabotage her campaign to prevent her from becoming their boss. It's also telling that these folks would break American law in order to, in their view, save it. Welcome to my chambers. Fight the good fight. Good evening. There will be no troop movements or a single shot fired. But NBC News has learned exclusively that the United States is poised for an unprecedented retaliatory assault against Russia in response to its interference in the U.S. election. Tonight, high-level U.S. intelligence sources are describing to us details of a CIA-led cyber retaliation against Russian computer systems. And it could get personal, targeting the Russian leadership from Vladimir Putin on down, who the U.S. accuses of sponsoring a series of hacks meant to undermine confidence in the American election. Senior investigative correspondent Cynthia McFadden has details. NBC News has learned the CIA is in the initial phase of a wide-ranging cyber retaliation designed to be both clandestine and embarrassing. Sources with direct knowledge of the operation tell us the target, the Kremlin leadership, particularly Vladimir Putin. If ordered by the White House, the CIA could manipulate things as specific as the banking accounts and personal phones of the Kremlin leadership. There's a great deal of offshore money that has moved out of Russia through the hands of oligarchs. It would be extremely embarrassing if that were revealed, and doing so would be a way to have a proportional response to what we have seen. The covert operation, the sources tell NBC News, is being run by a super secret group inside the CIA. Top secret documents indicate they have a staff of hundreds and a budget in the hundreds of millions. The covert operation is designed to send Russia a signal to back off. How does it work? U.S. cyber operatives have long been active inside Russia itself, trying to unlock the cyber doors the Russians work hard to secure feeding information back to CIA headquarters at Langley. Inside Langley, CIA super hackers use that information to direct drones and specialized low-flying satellites over Russia, and even submarines positioned off the Russian coasts. A former senior intelligence official tells NBC News he believes the U.S. response to the Russian hack should be overt for everybody to see and that it should include a persuasion campaign designed to inform the Russian people about Putin. If you publicly accuse someone and don't follow it up with a response action, that may weaken the credible threat of your response capability. Sean Canuck was until this spring the senior U.S. intelligence official responsible for analyzing Russian cyber capabilities. You're seeing it play out between two longtime chess players in this field. We've seen it in past decades in the nuclear era, and now we're seeing it in the cyber era. Unless we stand up to this kind of cyber attack from Russia, we'll only see more and more of it in the future. 
But tonight, while the CIA continues to lay the technical groundwork, we're being told that there are deep divisions at the top of the Obama administration about whether to proceed, and there are other options being considered. This mission cannot go forward without an order from the president. Lester? Cynthia McFadden tonight. Cynthia, thank you.